And guys, <clears throat> welcome back to High School E League. We are in the playoffs, boys. Um, of course, we are and girls and and girls, and yes, girls. of girls and girls and every every everyone in between. Um, but <laughs> so, <laughs> I am Jackson Proud Williams, your caster today, <laughs> and I'm joined by the ever wonderful. Benjamin Atika Lee, and it's amazing to be back. This is going to be the playoffs for South Australia between Glenunga International High School, Team B, and Prince Alfred College. And of course, both these guys are from, uh, both these schools are from South Australia. Now, this is a tiebreaker, I believe. Yep, for third and fourth place. So whoever will be winning this will be in third place. Whoever's losing will be in fourth place. Now, fourth place isn't bad. I wouldn't mind being fourth place. In a competition like this, it's amazing. But third place is even better, so you still want to win it. Yeah, exactly. Better placements in the uh, leading up into the finals and everything like that. Uh, getting to the live final at the um, Melbourne Esports Open, I believe, is happening. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we talked about this last week. The Melbourne finals will be live at Margaret Court Arena. Don't know if we'll be casting that or not yet, but we have, that's yet to be decided. But right now, let's focus on South Australia. They have two amazing teams. We've casted Glenunga before. We've also, we've also seen Prince Alpha College play before. Now, these two teams are really good, and they have matching icons as well. <laughs> they have matching summoner icons. But they don't... If, if we look at um, Prince Alfred, they do have uh, matching uh, clan tags, but Glenunga, Glenunga International High School to Team B, they're a bit, it's a bit disappointing with their um, clan tags. They haven't actually got the matching clan tag there. No, they don't. So we have a few... They have Mafia, Biyun, FBI. I like that one, FBI. <laughs> That's clever. I with I E Y E. So I was just doing a bit of research. Do you know what the uh, capital of South Australia is? Adelaide. No, Radelaide. Radelaide. Radelaide, yeah. I'm confused. It's because it's red. It's pretty red. <laughs> I dislike you, man. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm, I'm not sure what's happening it does look we are seeing a bit of a bit of a um bit of changing in the champs in the in the lobby the people are just uh moving around a lot so I think they're just rearranging their positioning but i want to say thank you to the entire team of high school e-league the people behind the scenes making sure that this all can happen <clears throat> allowing all the high schoolers to play in a tournament tournament this big it's huge and not only that i want to thank everyone who is able to play in this tournament as well. We have schools, high schools from all around Australia playing in this tournament. It's not just South Australia. It's not just Melbourne. We have Northern Territory. We have people everywhere. It's all... It, it is a massive tournament. It really is. And uh, the... Honestly, the... the traje like Pretty much organizing this in the first place is difficult. And then you have to go and uh, talk with every all the teachers, all the students, have to organize it with them, or it, to a certain extent, organize with the parents so they understand this is actual, like a sporting event, pretty much. So it's like, you, you send your, your um, son out to play rugby on the weekend or, on like, or in the afternoon. This is pretty much, this is the gamer's version of that. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing that this has become a reality for so many of these people. Like, imagine, imagine if this happened when we, were, when we were in high school. Like, how cool would that be? I would have... I just came out of high school. <laughs> I literally graduated year 12 last year. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and it's like, it's, I remember back when I, um, back, like, playing league in high school, and it's just like, I wasn't any good at it. So, honestly, if I played this back then, I would get creamed. Yeah, but, you know, bronzies. At least you can have the experience, right? I was uh, a bronzy, uh, was I? No, I was silver last year. I ended silver last year. Yeah, just. <laughs> so, no okay so i reached silver five i reached silver five about two weeks no about a month before the end of the season yeah, exactly just. and i stopped playing ranked after that because i didn't want to get demoted to bronze <laughs> i didn't i didn't realize that there was a d rank protection was there was it last yeah, year it's, uh, it's, i do believe d rank protection has was a thing for the last two years okay probably. well i didn't realize that so i just stopped playing rank and now I'm in. Uh, now I'm in gold. Yep, that's right. I'm in gold now, and my MMR is so shit. But that's it's it's, it's really so bad. terrible. It's so, so terrible. It's bad. It's really bad. It's it's just so It's very shiz. There, it's the shizzle. It's not the shizzle because the shizzle is a good thing. Oh, it, the fact that you're gold is the shizzle. Yeah. Look, okay. 
I'm Iron. gold. I'm gold five. Same as zero over here in uh, Glenonga International High School. You the man. You the man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Sprout. Hey, Sprout. How you doing? Actually, that's a good question. Because like, it's you, you see all the time. You see like these uh, weird symbols with the letters. Like pretty much it's variation of the letter. Um, it's okay. tones from different yep. languages. So that's like. So how would you pronounce that? Which which one? Zero. Zero. Oh. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into Google tra uh, Google Translate. <laughs> Zero, gonna... Okay, uh, Z. That's not even an O. That's 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 just not an O. It's um. It's pronunciation. Just type in translate and. Oh my god. Okay. Fine. Fine. Translate. Fine then. Jeez. And then no. Kurdish. It's Kurdish. Kurdish. What? 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 <laughs> okay, let's see what Kurdish is. Okay, let's just. Okay, so. Um, Dang. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to like post it in here. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, no, no. Kurdish. Go Kurdish. Kurdish it. Oh, you can't. You can't. Okay, you can't so, hear Kurdish. So it's it's uh, it's <laughs> right. I pronounce it like if you put it as English, it's zero. But wait, wait, wait. We just know it's the icon for ba for Baza, who just came in, also known as Barry. Uh, that... it's 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 the wrong icon. Bronze. Is that a bronze? Uh, yeah. So we are. Oh, it is gold. <laughs> it is gold. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, so you need to, you need to get up to platinum. now. <laughs> you can't stay in gold. You're in gold one. You gotta get up. Come on, come on. So baby. how 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 do we? How, so how would we? How do we want to pronounce zero this game? Do we want to go Zara, or do we want to do something like really weird, or Zara, 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 Zara? And Zara. No, I got this. I, I actually do have this. <laughs> so so we're gonna we're gonna pronounce it the way it's supposed to be. Zara. In my brain, it's Zara. Zara. Vermilion is the same thing. Vermilion. <laughs> No, no, zeh. It's ugh, ugh, ugh. How do you how do you spell that? How do you spell what? Oh, ugh. No, vermilion. E R M I L L I flem N. Flem N. Vermilion. Anyway. What did you do? That's irrelevant. Right now, we're in champs. Like so. Blue side. We have Glenonga International High School. B. Team B. They're going to be on blue side, and we're going to have Prince Alfred College on the red side. Now, first band's coming out. Right out is going to be Tarek and Zaya from Glenonga, and Echo coming out from Prince Alfred. So a lot of the time in these um mid mid tier ELO teams, what you see is you see comfort picks being banned out. Champions that aren't exactly like the most powerful, the power at the top end of the meta, are more champions that are good currently, and um that people are comfortable on. Because at the end of the day, if you play a champion that isn't like dominant in the meta, but you play it really well, it's a lot better than champs that dominate the meta and that you play decently. Uh, a good example is uh, Tico's Predator Quinn. Oh, it's, oh yeah. Bef it's it, been nerfed to the ground. Yeah, but before it got nerfed to the ground, even before it became really dominant, like Electrocute Quinn is really strong, but Tico's Quinn was a very different style. It used a lot more movement speed, used a bit more tankiness. And it was very much a uh, split push orientated, and he was decimating solo queue with it. He was it was what got him up to gold. It's what really just solidified him as like an amazing player. But <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like it's the electric Quinn is stronger, but Tico could play Predator Quinn better. So it's always better to do like that kind of thing. Yeah, so, use your own comfort to your advantage. But we do see Garen now. Garen's come back into meta, and Zeche has picked it. Oh. Has he really come back into the meta aside from the solo queue meta? Well, he's he's a solo queue champion and always has been. The issue is that with any kind of Garen is you're literally a tank that does damage and that's all you are. You don't have any CC, you have a lot of tenacity. So the whole point is to be able to dive the back line and hope to shred them. Um, you've got decent sustain, but you have to play the macro game. You don't have amazing split push. Uh, you don't have a you don't have any like any form of engage other than running at them. You do have a one man execute with no resets. So with Garen, the idea is to get ahead, be tanky as hell, dive the back line with your lack of mobility, and hope that you don't die in, in while you're doing that. Yeah, just be a massive tank. But we do see two massive tanks being picked on the side of Prince Alfred. Leona has come back in with a W buff 
as well as Sejuani. So Leona with the with the Eclipse buff is actually a very powerful champion now. Um, is you're so tanky in that early game, uh, and because a lot of time you do max a W first, um, and it allows you to get even more tanky stats now as well. And with the Sejuani Leona, the amount of lockdown you have. And this is looking like a very good protect the Caracom because the amount of peel and engage you have. And this is a, um, a sprout on the Jinx, which it is. Oh. Protect the carry comp galore, my friends. I love this. So, yeah, they did pick Jinx, but on the other side, they do have a Morgana and a Wukong. Wukong's been shredding this meta right now. They've had to nerf him, but he's still pretty dominant. Yes, indeed. But And they have, um, they did nerf, um, the domination tree as well which actually did affect wukong quite a bit but the whole point of the um morgana wukong is to put the black shield on that wukong and try and get onto the jinx um and with jinx jinx gets one reset in these fights jinx is going to absolutely decimate you have a you have a leona who can engage amazingly sejuani who's got decent engage and disengage and really good jungle clear as well and neither of those are really high economy champions so you can funnel that gold into the jinx you get your mid lane on something like a uh, a karma or something like that, and then you get your um you get your top lane onto something tanky uh, peel based. Then you have this amazing five man death ball, which keeps the Jinx alive, and you probably have, could have two lock of the iron Solaris to like d avoid any burst that might come out of the Wukong. Yeah, but we do see now the Draven has been banned out, which was a really good ban because Morgana was picked by FBI man, and Morgana Draven is just a terrible lane to go into. Especially as a Jinx and a Leona who can take who can't really take that much poke in the learning phase so, laning phase so really good ban but we do have a Renekton pick coming out from Prince Alfred so Renekton's really strong in regards to like the whole split push kind of thing so um, the alternative to the five man is the carry top and Renekton's one of the champions that starts off as a carry top laner and is amazing in the one v one and doesn't fall off the one v one because of the new essence reaver. Now, oh, what this... oh, oh, oh my god, we did not just see the Ariana. Oh, we saw the Ariana and we see a Yasuo. This is a wombo combo for the ages, my friend. Oh, if you do goodness. not, if you engage properly, you get uh, you get one knock up into another knock up into a shockwave into Yasuo just pressing R really hard on his keyboard. And it's, I don't need to tell you guys what actually happens when that when that goes down. So that's going to be a Yasuo AD carry as well. We do see two smites, I believe, as I hope they... Mm. It could be a Yasuo AD carry, or it could be the Garen. Of course, both of them have their um, perks, and with the Garen, you do have a lot more sustain in the lane, I do believe. But Yasuo just has this amazing maneuverability. So it really depends, because I don't think Yasuo is good into a Renekton, but Garen isn't amazing into Renekton either, so... It's really questionable, like, who do you want to go into the bad matchup at the top lane? And where do you go from there? Um, we look at this mid lane, Ariana, Syndra. Ariana's just a really safe laner, but I do think Ariana got nerfed a bit recently. Yeah, Ariana's um, ball magic resist stats. So whenever Ariana uses her ball, a shield, onto an ally, they get an increased amount of magic resist. That has been lowered by about five magic resist. So, so I, it's I don't know. Really it's, it's not a massive amount, no. but it's it's one of those things where it's a small tweak, which you do feel, especially in the early game. Um, and with Syndra, Syndra's a lane belief. Syndra gets ahead and then really starts snowballing the lane. Uh, you are looking at it's you're looking at one shots galore all over the map, and you don't really have anything in the way of like a massive frontline tank. You have a Wukong who can go bruisery, Yasuo who can go bruisery, but in most cases they're more damage based. You do have Lethality Wukong, which people have been so uh, so crazy about lately. You do have the Yasuo. Yasuo is pretty much tankiest stat about him is he'll probably go Fan Dancer um, into IE into maybe a um, maybe a Steric Gauge or something. So aside from Gavin, you don't really have a lot of tanky stats, but boy, do you have this ball delivery system. It is absolutely insane. Up in the top lane, though, Renekton, no matter who he's up against, you've got to worry about this Renekton. He's a 1v1 beast right now in this meta. And if he doesn't fall behind, if he gets ahead, he stays ahead. It is so hard to catch up to Renekton who's ahead, especially he goes, I do believe he goes like a Black Cleaver first. Uh, he can go to Triforce if there's not that much tank, if he really wants to. Um, he goes the uh, Titanic or maybe even the Ravenous, depending on how he's playing. 
And then third item is the Essence Reaver. He just pops his ultimate and he just shreds you, CC chains you, shreds you, CC chains you again. And that 1v1 potential for Renekton is so, so powerful. Looking in this bot lane though, the Jinx is a very passive laner. So going the melee lane here is actually not that bad a thing because Jinx can't really capitalize on it. Now we have, I do believe we did see Prince Alfred College do the Jinx Leona lane before to great extent. Like I've seen a few people try and pull this off to some degree. And you think, okay, cool, Leona's a kill lane, Jinx is a passive laner. But surprisingly, because the Chompers and also the uh, combination of Zenith Blade and Shield of Daybreak from Leona means a lot of lockdown. So it doesn't matter if you don't have the damage. You have the CC just to keep them locked up for days. And Jinx can just tee off. It's like it's just constant, like little taps will eventually break the wall. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, we've seen these guys play before and they do it really well. And this is this isn't this is this is a high stakes game. So as I said, as we said before, it's placed the third and fourth. A lot of the teams have already been eliminated, and these guys are top four. It's just deciding whether you're going to be top three, and they're just they're, they're playing for something. They want to show people that they belong in the top three, that they get more RP, and they get more um, they get more prizing than the team that they're playing against. So this is going to be one game to decide whether or not they're going to be able to get into top three. Yep. Yeah, so. That was a really good summarization. Like, really, uh, I love it. Absolutely. Just uh, really succinct right, to the right, point. Right. Top three, top three. There's a lot of top threes. But we do see a cleanse on the Sprout. So he's gone. He's gone. I don't know how I feel about yeah. the cleanse, yeah. though. So Sprout on Syndra has taken a cleanse, which is decent against a lot of our CC. Does Does it stop knockups? No, it doesn't. But you can flash right after you cleanse. So usually when you're knocked up, you can't flash. If you cleanse during a knockup, you can flash away during the knockup. So the alternative um, for this kind of thing. So it's one of those things where you can cleanse out of the Yasuo ultimate, I do believe. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. The Morgana, the Morgana snare, though, that is the main thing that we're going to looking for this cleanse. But I do believe that an alternative to that would probably have been like something, uh, something more along the lines of maybe a... Um, barrier or a heal because heal actually did get buffed in this latest patch it did so the cooldown reduction has been lowered it's a i mean this patch has basically been a nerf patch bringing a lot of the burst damage down allowing 80 carries to live <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's the end of your statement <laughs> just allowing 80 carries to live <laughs> yeah but the burst damage has been lowered heal has been reduced uh the cooldown reduction has been reduced so that's sort of bringing a lot of the assassins down to the level of the marks that marksmen are currently. A lot of people may disagree, but um, yeah, so this patch has basically been to nerf burst damage. It's nerfed a lot of the assassins, but it has nerfed a little bit on the marksmen as well because of the amount of nerfs that have been placed onto the domination tree. Mm, of course. And it's... What, so what this allows is it allows for more um, protect the carry comps and everything. It does mean that champions like Wukong, who were quite sleeper OP, and then were slowly coming into this meta, being like, oh, people were saying, oh, wow, this is actually strong. Level 6, a lot of base damage and a lot of like damage in general. So we are, we're now seeing just a, oh, just these champions like fall out. We're probably seeing more DPS champions still up there. Like we're seeing champions like Yasuo still being really strong. We're seeing champions uh like oh just even garen hasn't really been touched by these nerfs either so the fact that other champions have been nerfed means that champions that aren't really meta or weren't seen as meta worthy are still there and still strong um liana got massive buffs as you said before um well, i mean it's it wasn't a massive buff it was just an increase well she was already clips she was already strong yeah, as she well. was pretty strong but with the with the eclipse buffs She's going to be picked a lot more because she had in the past few patches, she hasn't been picked because of the resistance she didn't have. So now that she's got a bit more resistance, these laning phases during the game, she's going to be able to endure a lot more, bringing, bringing her weakness, her melee matchup, is going to be a bit more durable. Mm. And of course, so we are seeing like the kind of standard bot side starts, but... The Wukong is actually might just be going for an invade, but of course, 
Sprout is just uh just checking it out. Does look like it's a top side invade. Oh, oh Sprout. FBI man is there as well. Sprout taking a bit of damage, but uh nothing too much coming out from a level one Ori with, with just the ball. But Renekton's coming down here to run interference on the red buff. I don't think that's a quite a smart idea. It could just push in the wave and get a massive lead over the Garen. Of course, Sejuani in return could just invade the bot side jungle. Which he actually doesn't it looks like he might be going for the grump and then scuttle getting that vision and then invading afterwards oh walk straight into a dark binding vermilion doing quite a bit of damage zecha not really doing anything there mm, so zecha, right there just i'm sticking to it i promise <laughs> I like you it. i am sticking i to do it. not mind it in the slightest <laughs> But of course, we are seeing the um, Renekton taking a lot of harass, actually losing that trade massively. Yeah. This is a level one trade on the Renekton, and Garen just showing just this <laughs> is just showing why you don't mess with him right now. And of course, on top of that, Renekton's actually going for press the attack over Conqueror, knowing he's into a Garen top lane. So that is a bit of a oh, an engage coming out from Granvin though. Zecha is going to get stunned. A lot of damage coming out on to. First blood going over to Zecha. And of course, Zecha, what were you thinking there, my brother? You went in alone. Of course, Renekton is getting lazy. Remix flashes, but Quick Tyler 1 is on the ball. Absolute decimation right there. P pun intended, Ori or is in, in the game as well. Oh, oh we got combo from. We got like, onto we got balls man. from like Syndra as well, so that's like. Oh, that's, true. There's, oh, a, there's oh. a lot of balls in this game. Oh, that's like. It's ma massive, massive amount of balls in this game. Yeah. It's, 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 uh. Bunch of high school kids. That, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Quick Tyler 1 is going in for a gank on Sprout, though. He misses that, but a good stun under turret is going to get a lot of damage on the Greek Tyler 1. A teleport coming in from Lucy, I believe. Yes, this oh. game is chaotic as hell, but of course, we do have the level 3 on the side of our uh, boys, Glenunga. But of course, Prince Alfred College, they are having a terrible start to this tiebreaker game. A thousand gold down at three and a half minutes. This is not the game you want. But of course, with the Jinx, you do have the scaling. You do have the Sejuani. You do have the Leona. You have amazing scaling with the, any kind of death ball comp. But, and the Renekton, even after getting first, uh, after getting um ganked and killed, he's still up 10 CS. Like, Garen's doing a terrible job CSing right now. Yeah, he's at 7 compared to the 20 Renekton is at. So, uh, he, he might have a bit of trouble sustaining this and, so, and going into the late game. But... We'll see how this one goes. He's gonna have to. I reckon he's just gonna have to tank this game. To be honest, he's one level down, but he's dishing quite a bit of damage to Lazy Remix. Doran Shield doing its work as well, because he's just gonna heal that right back up. Now, an interesting build that I've seen on a Garen higher elo players who have picked Garen, because traditionally Garen is not a higher elo solo queue champion, right? Traditionally, but, yes. Yeah, traditionally, but there has been a few, a few players. Who play Garen up in this top, up in the top lane in the higher elos? Who take three rejuvenating beads? Uh yes, I've heard about this. So pretty much what three rejuvenating beads does is because um pre six your sustain is really your sustain your passive is really quite terrible in Garen. Um, you have to be out of combat for a long time, and even then it's not that great. Um, so what the three rejuvenation beads does is it just allows you to in combat just keep sustaining it up, and. What it does is it helps you your base health region. So you get 150% uh, well, plus 150% base health region, I believe. And it just allows you to sustain a lane better. And Garen's issue is just in the early stages just to sustain. And at the end of the day, it's only 450 gold investment. And what, what happens is you build that into your item. So oftentimes you build a wall mog, you build an adaptive helm. So they're not exactly going to waste. Either. Yeah, and the selling price for three rejuvenating beans is a lot better than one Dorn Shield. So, yeah, it sells for like 105. You only lose about 45 gold per rejuvenation bead. So, in total, after all that, even if you don't build it into any items whatsoever, uh, you're only losing about 150 gold in total, which is uh, quite good considering it's how much you sell the you sell the Dorn Shield for something like 180 or something. So that's you lose like over 200 gold. You lose about 270 gold on the um Dorn Shield. Yeah, but we do see Lucy has brought the CS back from the brink, and Lucy's doing quite a good job at at zoning out Lazy Remix. Lazy Remix knows he can't go for a trade against this Garen right now, and he's that uh, cute to, to show him, hey, this is my lane, back off. 
And of course, and he does deny the cannon as well on Lacey. Oh, Remix. Lacey Remix taking quite a bit of damage. He's forced to flash away from this one. There's the threat of the ultimate coming out from Lucy as well, so that's going to be a bit dangerous. We do see Alcorec, he's up in this top side though. He may be looking to get a stun, but he's not going to do so. Of course, we do. Uh, that is a very low Greek Tyler 1 right there. He knows what he's doing. He's <laughs> he's playing He's playing the game. Well, of course, he's, he's Tyler 1. He's, not he's right the now. Greek Tyler 1. Greek Tyler 1. So, it's, it's, is that, how is that any different than the normal Tyler 1? It's like, it's like what's what's the main difference aside from like any Ooh, good predict? Um, nothing. 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 Just, just just he's just Greek. He's just Greek. And of course we do have the wide Morgana binding, mate. You should need to get some glasses. That's speed of glasses. Too oh hard. look. <laughs> <laughs> how's 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 getting that new glasses going for? Uh, really well, but uh, Vermilion did land <laughs> in the first kill in the bot side with a dark binding. Ooh, shockwave. Trying to solo kill the Sprout, but he's got a bit of health for this one. Ignite has been landed, cleanses that one. And yes. that's going to be a smooth getaway with a flash and a cleanse gone from Sprout. Four man mid, you blow the flash and the cleanse. But of course, how much do you lose for sending four men mid? Not only do they now track the Wukong, they uh, get a free lane bot for the Jinx just to free farm up. Which and is good. Jinx does have a BF sword right now. Um, and depending, which, is even better. which depending on where, like most Jinx's builds will go, like the Storm Razor, get their early power spike. Um, then you go into probably a Runins, and then a um, Infinity Edge. So by the time you get three items, you are on point. And the fact that they aren't really punishing the Jinx means that it's it's there's not really it's that's not exactly a good thing because unless you can get onto the Jinx late game, Jinx is just going to start shredding. Of course, this top lane reactant pick is not paying off right now, as uh, Lucy's just being able to shut down Lazy Remix. A 10 CS lead now, and uh, Lazy oh. Remix is just applying no pressure to the map. No, he can't right now. He doesn't have teleport up, he doesn't have flash. He knows he can't go for a trade against Lucy, so he's just relying on the rest of his team to help him carry. Now, they brought the gold lead back a bit to 700, but Greek Tyler won. He's forced to flash. <laughs> oh! 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 As a great sniper's Akarek face planted into the wall. And of course, there we have the cohesion, and that just might mean a uh, an attempt on Dragon right here. But of course, we do have FBI man from the FBI. Um, he is coming down here to help uh, contest it. But of oh, course, binding misses. But Baza is not taking any damage from Zecha. However, a good shockwave lands on Akarek. But the follow-up heal is not going to help them land that one. Dark Binding just misses. Zecha taking quite a bit of damage from Baza dodges. Vermilion, however, is the focus from Leona. In comes Greek Tyler 1. Electrocute has been propped. Ulti coming out from Sprout as well. This is just a bit of hectic coming out from the bot side. Meanwhile, top side, Lucy's got a free farming lane up top side. He's bringing the CS gold back. Alcorek smites a bit early, so the AD carry can get that one. But they're able to secure the first Mountain Drake of the game. Mm, and they, uh, so that all came off the top of uh, picking off the Wukong, allowing for the uh, no smite contest. But of course, by the time everyone came down and Dragon was taken, it was just pretty much just a, a zoning battle. And of course, Prince Alfred College did win that. They had this amazing amount of CC. Um, they did have to blow the flash of, uh, sorry, the heal on the, uh, on Baza just to keep uh, Aqua Wreck alive. But of course, what this does is it equalizes the gold, gets them a mountain drake in their pocket, and it just allows them to just contest. But of course, up in this top lane, it's still a story of the Garen just shredding. Garen's just out sustaining this uh, lazy remix up here. Oh, oh, he dashes in, dashes right back out. Lucy, there's been quite a bit of damage against lazy remix. Ultimate is there from both members, so they are not going to go for that one. But of course, Lucy does have the better sustain out of combat. Look at that health regen right now, just slowly coming back up. And without uh, neither of them have mana, so it's all a question of like how much health can you have, how much rage for the Renekton. And it's 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 definitely a, it's definitely a game of chicken. The uh, Garen doesn't want to ultimate while the ultimate on the Renekton stuff because you can't activate that quite instantaneously. So. It's a game of reactions and baiting right here. Exactly, and right now, the Lazy Remix isn't having the best game, as we said multiple times. The gold is fairly even, just a 200 gold difference between these two teams, maybe 150, but... 
Yeah, the gold difference between these two, Lucy is ahead. He's at 3,300, while Lazy Remix is at, well, let's say, 2,900. Yeah. So it's about a 300, it's about a 400 gold difference right there, the 450 gold difference in the top lane um, in favor of Lucy. And Garen is just an amazingly, uh, an amazing scaling champion in regards to damage in 1v1, but not in regards to team fights. You come into team fights, I do believe in Renekton. As long as he's tanking up, diving the back lines, he's seeing a key priority target, is going to be more impactful than the Garen, unless the Garen can really use the um, ultimate to get that execute. Oh, but we do see a lot of the members coming towards this bot side. Meanwhile, down bots on oh, mid side. <laughs> Meanwhile, down bot side, Vermillion taking quite a bit of damage. Zeche is going to help kill Baza as he's going to. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just going to kill that. That's, and that's the end of that one. right there they got overly aggressive they blew everything trying to go for the kill but they don't have the kill pressure they had the power spike from the jinx the storm razor but of course they just weren't able to get the damage down and with greek tower one coming down we all know how how annoying a wukong is when you have six just that ultimate has so much cc and damage and it's just an amazing um just it's just an amazing champion to uh get those uh, get that burst damage off as well as cc I'm yet to see Greek Tyler 1 and Zeha their combo, but Granfin is going to lock in Greek Tyler 1. Not enough damage. Actually, it is. The Sprout picks up massive Shockwave for members, but no one can capitalize on that one. Meanwhile, they're looking to dive underneath the turret. Granfin taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to stun up FBI Man. FBI Man, don't know where that ball went, but Lucy is going to be able to barely escape that one. FBI Man picking up another one onto Akrawek. The Lazy Remix is going to be able to kill FBI Man eventually and get away with less than half his health. And that was a massive dive right there, and I don't think it was worth it, unless they get this tower. But of course, they do have the pressure there. The Jinx, in the meantime, Baza, he's just getting free farm down bot lane, so this might just be worth for them, because they do get the uh, they do get the mid tower, they get free farm on the Jinx, and even though it didn't look that great a trade, it does look like it might have just worked out in their favor. Yeah, it definitely did. And now their gold is ahead. Prince Alfred College is now five, hundred gold ahead it's still not a massive difference they're actually doing really well glenonger are doing really well to stay in this game and of course with this with this it does allow um reacting to get that ex uh get back equal that goalie but of course the garen does have the black cleaver to a phage and a tiamat so the black cleaver at this early in the game isn't an amazing thing for um the armor shred and the order resets on the tiamat and the extra regen from the tiamat may just give renekton the edge uh, for Lazy Remix just to try and like win the 1v1 at the moment. Um, but it's all a question of how well they can utilize this. And of course the Ninja Tarbite as well, I just, uh, just noticed. Renekton, I reckon Renekton wins these trades up in the top lane now. Oh, we have yet to see that though, as... As we do see, Lucy is still dominating that top side with the amount of pressure that he's applying. Not just in the top lane, but everywhere else. Lucy is roaming. Now we do see two members trying to capitalize on this one. He does get the slow. Another slow with a smite. He's going to be able to stun him up as well, but a lot of spin to win coming out from Lucy. He's tanky as well, but is he tanky enough to sustain this? Greek Tyler 1 is going to join the fight. He might be able to... Ex oh, good knockup, but it's not going to be enough. A really good Glacial Prison coming out onto Greek Tyler 1. He's going to try and juke this one away, but he's going to force the flash. Akurek follows him as well. A couple, one more auto, and Akurek finishes him off. And of course, that was an amazing 2v2. They were able to get onto... Oh, looks like it's another dab at the oh, wind wall. That's a really good wind wall coming out from Zeta. And Beza taking quite a few target shots, bringing him down to just above half health. Zero. Zeta, sorry. You're really enjoying this name, aren't you? I am. I'm loving it. <laughs> but we do see... He's going to walk... Oh! The shockwave oh, no. for the ages! Got the Smithy shockwave mm. right there! FBI, <laughs> man. Uh, there, no one saw that. No, that's fine. No one saw that. FBI yeah. man, if you ever want to be a caster, that you look like you have what it takes. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, FBI. Yeah. Uh, the Smithy Shockwave is my Shockwave. How are you a Shockwave? I'm definitely like, Pokemon main Shockwave. <laughs> <laughs> you should be a caster, yeah? yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's besides the point. Wait, wait, wait. You see them taking why, that. Why are we mentioning Poke, Pokemon? She's a <laughs> she's a Fortnite streamer. Oh, now she is. But when she <laughs> played Oriana, she was pretty. It was okay. But we do. They did pick up the Infernal Drake as well. So Prince Alfred College, Infernal, and Mountain, and now they are ahead in gold by three thousand. So after that four star, and especially with the um with the Jinx scaling up now, uh, you do have um you are getting almost got the Luden's Echo onto the uh. 
Syndra. So that's going to be a massive power spike. And this can be where Syndra really starts bullying in the Ariana. And, um, doing what needs to be done. Reek Tyler 1 on the Wukong. Wukong is falling behind. And we all know how, how bad Wukong can be when behind. Wukong relies on those base stats to try and really stay alive during the engage. And the CC that he brings out with his ultimate. But, of course, it's going to be very problematic for him to actually, uh, be oh. effective and not get burst seeing this lineup especially the cc that can come out from the syndra uh the sejuani the renekton so much cc and lockdown potential um so unless you can get onto the jinx the team fights here are won by prince alfred college yeah and they are pushing up in this top lane as well garen pinging for help lucy will not be able to fight them he does a lot of shred but it's not going to be enough as a lot of lock in he's going to be able to super mega death rocket him to death and right there, but we do have the Ariana coming up here. FBI man has got Granvin really low. He does have the Shockwave available, so he could just try and go for a bit of a cheese here and get Granvin. Granvin has is just backed up, and it looks like they're just gonna just gonna sustain up and just try and um. You you you're doing my job. Oh, Shockwave misses again. I think FBI man believed that that uh, ball was on him. Glacial Prison does lock in for Million. He's forced to flash away from this one. Will condition quite a bit of damage with the combo of Zeha and Akurek taking quite a bit of the damage. But a really good disengage coming out from Sprout. Shuts down Zeha. The double kill going over to him as Greek Tyler 1 goes down as well. And of course, they did what they needed to do. They got onto Baza, burst him down. But of course, it wasn't enough. <laughs> Lazy Remake's just been split pushing this entire time. This just might be... And this is a Riptoe drop in top lane. Yeah, they they're get taking a it. <laughs> this is a free top tower. They must be able to go for the inner tower as well as the top lane. And this will balloon that gold lead to over 5,000 gold. Um, Lucy's just trying to keep Lazy Remix off. But Lazy Remix doesn't need to do anything. He just needs to keep Garen away from the rest of his team. And they win the split. Yeah, they do have Rift helping them push down the second tier turret. Lucy knows he can't trade with Lazy Remix anymore. He's forced to back away from this one. Rift has been used to take down two turrets, so that's really capitalizing on that one. 7,000 gold difference between these two teams now. A oh, huge difference. And of course, um, with Greek Teller 1, you're 2 for one on a Wukong. That's not a good sign. Uh, they are literally relying on the um, kind of wombo combo that they have set up for themselves. Uh, and Zero at the moment, only level 9. He d only has a BF sword. He only has his um, he only has his Phantom Dancer. Whereas Jinx is a good 30 CS up. And for Baza, this is huge. He's got his Blue Dark Greaves. He's got his Storm Razor. He's uh, building towards what looks to be, I reckon, is going to be a Rudin's Hurricane. And that's just going to, like, balloon this Baza up to, like, this insane lead. And it just means that these team fights are going to be so one-sided. What, uh, what... Glenunga has to do is have to try and like get these picks, get these um wombo combos off, get the engage of engages. And of course, with the vision control from Granvin, that is gonna be so hard to do with these death bushes that they need. Yeah, they are not gonna be able to capitalize on that one. We have yet to see a massive combo coming out from Greek Tyler 1, Zeha, and and uh FBI man. So I I'm I'm really keen to see it if it does happen, but they have yet to find an opportunity to do so. You know what I'm really keen to see? What? FBI man hitting a shockwave. Yeah, me too. Oh, he hit one on a uh, Sprout, the solo. Yeah, I know. That was, that was good, but I like it to like, hit another, you know? Okay, so it was a commendable effort as he uh, tried to ult flash, you know, the combo where you can uh, <laughs> animation cancel <laughs> yeah. on Orianna. I love doing that, but only if I do it. Yeah. <laughs> if I actually make Key it. Key point, if you actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Sprout, he's going to be able to take that rift quite easily getting a bit of vision onto Baron. Not saying that Glenn Unger International don't have one because they have placed the ward there, but Zeha may be looking to trade with Lazy Remix. Lucy is there as well to help out, but that's a lot of, uh, well, it's not a lot of armor, but that's a lot of health and resistance, no, not resistance. It's a lot of mitigating a lot of Zeha's damage. <laughs> oh, indeed. But of course, we are seeing just, um, Dodges. Oof, look at those jukes. He's got the fancy footwork right now. But with Baker! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> but of course, that's a Rudin's Hurricane for Jinx. Um, we still don't have a second item for Zecha. Um, and these these are expensive items for um, for Baza, but of course, with the crit item changes, that's a thousand gold cheaper to get your three items if you go Storm Razor, your Zeal item, and then your IE. So a thousand gold cheaper. That's your faster power spikes. You're more relevant. Uh, you're more relevant early. Uh, 
a good glacial prison onto Greek Tyler 1. He's gonna have to juke away from that one. Solar Flare misses as well. Super Mega Death Rocket takes him down. Bazaar's going huge. Vermillion's left the game. Three man shockwave as he lost for. And they're gonna be able to take down a lot of their health. FBI man is barely escaping. He doesn't escape. Ignite has been used. If he doesn't, he doesn't have barriers, so that's gonna go down. Right in the middle of a team fight. Thanks, Vermillion. And of course, um, that was that was something Sigh. for the days. Sigh. Like you just saw the uh, the glacial prison come out. Now followed, up, and it's like I, I saw then I saw the glacial prison and the solar flare, and I'm thinking, oh wow, two ways ultimates. Wu comes out, then the mega death rocket, and Jinx is so far ahead that it just decimates Wu Kong from a bit under half health. I believe that Akarek dealt a bit of damage there as well. Oh, just, just before Super Mega Death Rocket landed, there was a little bit of damage to bring. Just a little, just a little, just a little bit, tiny little like bit. Like that difference between 10 HP and 0 HP. That's that's the, mm. that's what Akarek contributed. And with with Baza, with the Super Mega Death Rocket from Jinx, what happens is it's execute damage. So the lower their health is, the more damage it does. Well, the further it travels as well, because there's two... This, Two scalings on it, yeah. Yeah, there's two. So, like, there's, what was it, a thousand range or something? Some of that, yeah. I, I have to check that out. But Baza, the Super Mega Death Rocket, for those who don't know, it's it's not it's not a it's not a the further the rocket travels, the more damage it deals. It's got two different damage. It's it's got two specific damages. So there's within let's say a thousand range, as he uses it, it deals less damage. M Past a thousand range, it's, it deals a little bit more, uh, a lot more actually. It's you can you can also visually see the difference between the two rockets. But yeah, so this is going to be a pause. I'm just rambling right now, but it's going to be a bit of a pause. Vermillion has left the game, or DC, or just uh, you know, um, what's the word? He's rage quitted. Rage quitted, probably rage quit. Rage wait, rage quitted. Rage quitted. <laughs> but we do see. Oh, voice break. We do. <laughs> That's, are, are you right there? Uh, it's, it's, we do it's, see. Next thing you know, is going to be like, and we do see. And um, uh, yeah, yeah. We do see the Athenian's Unholy Grail <laughs> being picked up by FBI man. But of course, let's let's look at the Morgana for a minute. So I was Morgana, focusing on FBI man. No, oh, it's, it's, but here's one thing that we need to look at. The Morgana's <laughs> going for a very interesting build with the yeah. Zeke's Convergence. So what this means is that Morgana's going for more tankier CC oriented build rather than like a, your traditional AP build with your uh, Zonia's Hourglass. So you're doing less damage. Um, but with the Zeke's convergence, what that does is you would want to put it onto your AD, uh, in your AD champion, and you activate your ultimate at the start of the fight, so that their orders on power. So you you link it to your Yasuo, for example, and then you go in there, you initiate the fight, pop your ultimate, and then next thing you know, the Yasuo just gets these empowered orders for the next like however long, and will absolutely be out of shred. The issue here is that with orders on his hourglass. It does become hard for the Morgana to stay alive. Yeah. Even though the Zeke's Convergence does give you the 60 armor and 30 magic resist, I believe. So it does allow for um Oh, we're right back into this. Graven goes down. Zeta picking up that one. Baz has got resets though. Couple more. Oh no. And of course Baz got excited, but you are too excited, my friend, as he goes and dives too deep. But of course, this does mean that um it's a shutdown right there, and but it doesn't really matter because is, is oh, 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 great binding coming out from Vermillion. But of course, Lazy Remix doesn't do anything to him except just dissuades him from diving any further. But of course, this is this is a question. It's like you're 7,000 gold down, you're two drakes down, five towers to zero. You're about to lose a third Infernal Drake, and these Infernal Drakes are going to keep on making champions like your Jinx, your Renekton, even your Asindra just so insurmountable. Jinx is going to stack this IAG. The Renekton, he's got the stair, he's going to get the Steric's Gauge, he's going to get the Titanic Hydra. That's all. He's got the Black Cleaver already. That's a lot of AD already. That extra scaling is going to make it absolutely huge. Yeah, but we do have. We do also also see the Zeke's convergence coming out, coming out from Granvin. So that's going to be another one of these interesting first items. Now I see, I see why Vermilion picks up because picks up uh, Zeke's convergence because look at the combo that that team that team has. The wombo combo is amazing if they do pull it off, and with the empowered auto, uh, empowered auto, yeah, yes, empowered on autos on the Yasuo. It's huge, especially with the ultimate that might come out from 
Yeah, so, you know. Key term, might. Might. <clears throat> we have yet to see Vermilion use an ulti. Um, Soul Shackles need to be used. Yeah, that is true. Like, it's it's been quite... Like, and the issue was in that last team fight, he was Ooh. DC'd in a perfect time to use the ultimate where they're all... Oh, he was a dead. Oh, he, well, we died and then he DC'd afterwards. So, yeah. he wasn't able to get to the fight, even if he um, got back in time. Um, but it does appear that it's just going to be like a, a... Just a store fest in the mid lane. While uh, Lazy Remix, who no one can 1v1 right now, Gaswo doesn't out, uh, can't outscale Renekton the 1v1. Renekton's already ahead, so the Garen can't really match it, especially because he's gone Merc Treads over the um, Ninja Tarbi. And we do have the Titanic Hydra, so the split push potential of the Renekton. Lazy Remix just can't be beating the split push right now. And that's all they need to do. They just need to keep on applying pressure, and they slowly win the waiting game. As even if they don't get any objectives, they sort the game. Jinx gets even bigger, and their late game team fights are so much stronger. Yeah, and we do see Alcarek. He's picked up the first his first item, Warmogs, which is usual. Yeah, which is usual for Sejuani. But they have they have a lot of control over this map. They don't have much vision, however, so that might be their downfall if it ever comes up. But oh, they do have quite a bit of vision in this bot side jungle, just mm. two wards or something. But they don't have much vision on the Baron, just to control ward. They do have two control wards in that river, but that's going to be easily cleared. And yeah, if they, if they, if uh, Glenelga are going to be able to turn this around, it's going to be because of the lack of vision from Prince Alfred. A really good Glacial Prison lands, and so does a Solar Flare, and they are able to pick out Great Tyler 1 so well. And with the, with the jungler down and the Renekton still splitting, keeping the Garen busy, this may just be a free uh, Baron. They have got so much shred with the with um, Baza, and of course it does look like instead of just um, going for the Baron, they are going to collapse on Lazy Remix. Lazy Remix is popping the ultimate, just trying to run, but the rest of the team's collapsing. Yeah, they are. Will they be able to land any damage? Not using the Dark... Sh oh, he does miss it. Dark Binding does miss. Lacey Remix is going to dash over that one as well. Flash still down, but they're going to be able to escape easily with the Baron in their pocket as well. And of course, all he burns for that is the Flash and the ultimate, oh, and he, he gets... Didn't, he out. didn't even use Flash. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he didn't even have the Flash. He just, he just got burned his ultimate, and he is out of there alive. And of course... That is a free Baron for the entire team. Oh, good stun. One man, as he's going to be able to pick down another kill. Two men down. Akurek is taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to go down as well. FBI man slaying two. Shutdown gold going over to him, as well as Lucy picking up another kill onto Granvin. That is a really good turnaround, and there's only one member left with Baron and Power Minion. And Glenunga, welcome to League of Legends! Welcome to the Rift. <laughs> I mean, they've, they've been playing League for a long time. It's, it's the Rift that they have been welcome to. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good to see that we've uh, got a two-team game right now. And that was the team fight that they wanted. They've been looking for this entire time. You had the Shockwave come out onto, the, onto Sprout and Bazza, the two primary carries. And, of course, they get absolutely shredded with Shockwave um, and the uh, Yasuo Ultimate. And... It just allows for them to open up the map to get some towers back in their pocket, bridge this what was originally an 8,000 gold deficit, and it's all they need is just to knock down a few towers and bring it back to 5,000, and then they're relevant again. They can start uh, pumping gold into the Garen. Garen can start matching the split. Um, they wow. can get pressure. That is three towers, in fact, four on the, on the back of this team fight, and that's 5,000 gold difference. This is a huge turn. But still, it's nothing compared to like what they need to do. They need to get two to three more fights like that, and they could just turn this around for a win. And it's, I we definitely need to see things like a, a lock of the iron liar or something to keep the uh, Baza and Sprout alive because they got absolutely decimated. Yeah, they did, and I mean they weren't. Prince Alfred weren't in the right position to take a fight at that point, but they've reset. They still have their split pusher with Baron, so that might be a bit of a problem if he, if they do decide to go for a 1-4, which they looks like they're doing right now. They have spotted that Lazy Remix, and they really, really want to take him down. They've sort of moved towards that area. Of course, Dragon's up in 30 for a second, so what they've been doing is a very Dragon-dominant playstyle. They've got four, three Drakes already just, below, just before uh, 27 minutes and 30 seconds. So it looks like they may just go for a five Drake game before the um, Elder Drake's even up. And with so much pressure coming for the Renekton, wherever the Renekton is, the, it does look like this may just be a free uh, in, 
create another Infernal Drake, which is going to make the Jinx and the Syndra such a powerful threat in these team fights. Well, they have set up a death push in here. However, they, however, Glenn Unger aren't going to be in the right position to, for them to take that. But Lucy up in the top lane cave taking quite a bit of damage from Lazy Remix, and he's not going to be able to trade with him. Pressy Attack doing a bit of work for him, and they're going to be able to take down a third in Infernal Drake of the game. Lucy forced a flash away from that one, and Lazy Remix might be looking to capitalize on top of that one. He's got a Baron Empowered Minions pushing down this inhibitor turret. We do see Greek Tyler 1 out the side. Is does have ultimate in his pocket. Lazy Remix doesn't have ultimate as he just used it. That's a shutdown going over to Lucy. But the rest of the team is pushing down this mid lane turret. A good dark binding does land onto Akurek. He might be caught out of position here. A good slow, but not good enough. Slow flare has been landed. The Glacial Prison does not land as Vermillion support has been picked has picked up the kill. And once again, they're just stalling out the game. They give up the Drake, but of course they don't lose anything else. They can pick up two kills, and all this does is allows more gold to go in their pockets and the game to stall out. Allows the um, Yasuo to get the items that he needs. Allows the uh, item gap between their carries to uh, just to shorten. We do have what appears to be a Rabbidon's being picked up for the Sinja very soon, but as opposed to the Ariana, who's already at three cheaper items, so it has a different power spike altogether. Um, and with the Athenes, oh, Greek Tyler 1 getting a massive combo with the help of, uh, with Zecha. He's going to be able to pick up two, but they have turned this one around really quickly. Flash coming out from Baza. He's gotten two, three. He's on a triple kill going for a quad. He's going to be able to do that. And that's going to be an ace going over to the side of Prince Alfred College. They're looking to push it down mid and end this game. And right there, we see FBI man with the curse of the shockwaves missing everybody it hit absolutely no one in that team fight and from there uh Baza was just given free reign just to do his autos he got excited and then he absolutely shredded and of course they just made be the game zero uh Zeha, Zeha and vermilion are not up for another 15 seconds and of course they are shredding this is this this is gonna be the game yeah it is a game this is gonna be third place going over to prince alfred college fourth going over to glen unga unfortunately but that was a massive game coming out from both teams playing at their best. Glenn Unger almost bringing it back, but unfortunately they couldn't. They were pushed up too far. Shockwave missed. It's not your fault, FBI man. You did not lose the game for your team. It was just unfortunate that Prince Alfred College capitalized on what they could. And it just wasn't enough damage coming out from Zeche and Greet Tyler 1 to be able to get a huge lockdown and be able to pick up more than two kills. Oh, no, they didn't pick up any actually, but it just was unfortunate that they couldn't use that team fight combo to their biggest advantage. Uh, the one time we did see them really do it, they were able to get a pick off onto Sprout and Baza, the two primary carries, and were then able to shred the team. There are a few times where they were able to get like certain pickups, and uh, when uh, Prince Alfred College looked a bit disorganized, when they looked like they had this amazing advantage, but of course. Overall, like amazing play from both teams and uh, guys, we're looking forward to seeing you two in the playoffs. South Adelaide, uh, so South Australia, Radelaide, you are ready to go on for those playoffs. Well, guys, uh, we are going to go for a quick break. Um, we will be back shortly at seven o'clock in forty minutes time. Uh, stay in, don't well, get up, go have a drink, uh, stretch your legs. And guys, it's, it's going to be an absolute pleasure casting with you soon.